All right, welcome back. So today we're going to tie an amber chironomid. Uh, over the seasons we've seen these amber chironomids come off usually a little bit later in the day. They're usually a little bit bigger than some of the other chironomids that we're, we're fishing and uh, we get a total commitment on them. So we're going to tie one of these for you. We've got a coffee brown magic bead there. It's a two millimeter bead on a size 14 hook. And we're going to use our Lagarden brown extra strong thread to tie in our gill material, which is Antron. So we've got a piece of Antron here. I like to give it a little twist and tuck it underneath, lift the thread on top do a little X pattern and we want to pull slightly upwards as we pull downward on the thread that creates a nice little V and then we're going to build up just a little bit of thread behind the antron just so when we do place the bead in place it doesn't change the position at all and force the antron forward which changes that little that V gill shape that we like to keep. So we'll just build up a little trumpet shaped thread behind there just so it catches. Just keep checking. Make sure we get the right amount. Keep, keep that material out of the way. I don't like to have it get cluttered up. There we go. We'll just trim that. Put a dab of Loctite on there. And we'll force that into position right there. Beauty. Okay, so to trim these, we're going to pull these at about a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to cut also at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to turn this slightly so I can see the side of the eye of the hook. I know it's hard to see, but that's what we want right there. If we take that out of the vise, you can see that nice little V gill. And that's what we want, just like the naturals. Okay, so our body thread is going to be burnt orange, 70 aught. Okay, or 70 denier, denier. All right, and we'll start by just adding the upper half. Our wire today for the rib material is copper brown ultra wire, and this is a small. Okay. So we'll secure that right up against the bead and tie on down the side of the shank of the hook nice touching wraps and as we get to about the hook point I'm going to spin to flatten that thread counterclockwise just makes a nice smooth lower section once we get to right about where the barb is we're going to lift that wire and go in with two three wraps one just behind and then one in front that's your first segment then we're going to tie in our rib material, which is a copper flashaboo, could be a hollow tinsel, in a small size. So we're going to catch that just right in front. We're going to back off that first wrap in front and then grab this material with that first wrap. And then nice touching wraps straight back up. Okay, right to the bead. So we're going to go back and forth a few times, build a taper. And again, before we change directions, spin counterclockwise, flatten that thread so we get a nice transition. Back up. 
and we're just continue with our taper so these like I said or like I said earlier these tend to be a bit larger than some of the other bugs we've been fishing with all morning and all of a sudden in the afternoon you start seeing these orangey brown husks on the water and we know that they're much bigger than the other chronomids the fish got to be eating them somewhere so once you go looking and uh, just go into the wind <laughs> Go into the wind and you may find them. So here we go. So we got a pretty good taper there now. So now we're going to tie in our wing buds. So we're going to have a look at that. You can see how things are looking now. Wing buds, uh, like we've used before, are goose by it. And I've pulled away two from the stems. And we want to position them. These are rusty brown. So I like to match the, some of the colors, you know, of the, the wing buds to the, to the bug. If we have a green bug, we usually use a light olive uh, wing bud. Um, if we have a black bud, I usually, bug, pardon me, a black bug, we usually use a, a darker brown. Um, or a lighter gray bug sometimes we'll use a, a ginger or a cinnamon color so something that looks similar to the natural for sure so we're just going to line up those tips and this bug we want a fairly broad wing bud so we're going to trim off a pretty good chunk of that tip and then we're going to Lay these into position here just to position them. A couple loose wraps. Position with our fingers and thumb. Get them into that, as I've said before, that carpenter amp sort of shape, wing shape. And secure that behind the, there we go. There we go, build up a little bullet. And we'll whip finish that off utilize our cradle good little tip too is have your thread bobbing real close to the top of that cradle it's easier when you go to tie things off you're nice and close all right next let's get our wing buds out of the way so we can wrap our body materials on this one we're going to use uh, ink to create a nice red bump and we'll use the pointy end of our alcohol-based pens and we'll just create a red bum and that will bleed nicely once we put some glue on there okay first material forward is going to be our our copper wire I like to use my hackle pliers as you've seen before if you've watched any other already videos it just gives me better control okay we can push our wing buds forward a little bit that's it good and here we go moving forward creating segments both insect segments and video segments <laughs> all right we get to our wing bud attachment area it looks like we can just nicely slide in behind there perfect there we go and then we can just push them back a little to secure in front this one's a little closer we're going to open it up a bit there you go and tuck that nicely in around the bead drop thread move the cradle two wraps in front two wraps behind and then we'll get rid of the wire with a little helicopter all right center there we go we're going to then secure our thread again two wraps sorry Move that a little early. There we go. Now we'll move our wing buds forward again. And then we'll use our copper hollow tinselly material to highlight again right in front of our wire, which just makes that bug pop. You can see that as we move forward, there's just so much more brightness to it. And we can just push those back. 
There we go, right in behind the bead. Let's move that away. Catch that once, twice, three times. And we can just shorten that and capture that little tag. There we go. Let's put our thread right against the bead and then we're gonna pull our wing buds forward. Catch there, move the one closer to the camera forward. There we go. And we'll back off and catch that one as well. That's pretty good. We're gonna just lower those a little bit. That's it, good. And we're gonna once, twice, three times, back those off, go in front two times, whip finish. There we go. Give it a good snug, keep good tension on there. I'm sure you've seen me do these before. I sure hope you have anyways. And here we go. We're doing the trim. And then we'll also employ our hack pliers to remove the top section of our wing buds. Now another little trick for this one is we'll utilize a brown felt pen. Okay, so now we're going to use just an alcohol-based brown felt pen and we're just going to color on top a little bit and underneath in between the wing buds a little bit. Once we add our glue, that'll really bleed out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to add our Loctite and then that blends that comes alive in the butt. And we get a little bit of glue all over our wing buds. And there you have it. The amber. Tie one on. Cheers.